Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf Yomi Shabbos Daf Kuf Aleph. We are in Daf Kuf Amid Beis. Two lines from the bottom. It says the Gemara, Koyche be karmelis le The Gemara is concluding a discussion regarding the allowance to spill water, wastewater, shayfchen from the ship, which is a Rishis HaYachet, over to the, uh, to the sea, which is a karmelis. The Gemara tells us how does they do it? By pouring it on the top of the, um, of the wall of the ship and allowing the water to trickle down into the sea below. So although there's a transfer taking place from a Shazayach to a Karmelis, there's no concern because Koycha be Karmelis le Gozut, Chacham did not establish a Gzair and Isser pertaining to transferring merely indirectly through a Koycha, through using his force. For instance, in this case where he is simply pouring onto the top of the wall of the, um, of the boat and having the water trickle on its own into the Karmelis. Continues the Gemara, how do you know that the Chachamim allowed uh, such, a, um, such a transfer to take place through Koychoy? How do we, where do we find this concept? The Sanya is willing to embrace it. Sfina, a boat which is a Rishi Sayochet, a Metatlan, Loi Mitzayochet, one cannot transfer from the Toych of the Sfina, which is a Rishi Sayochet, Liyam, out to the uh, sea, which is a Carmelis. Nor can he transfer from the yam into the boat, which is a Rishi Sayachet. Rabbi Yudah Oimer, Amuka Asor. What if the ship is ten tefachim deep, meaning the in- interior surface of the interior um, space of the ship has a dimension of ten tefachim in height? So the interior of the ship is ten tefachim high. However, the ship is not lifted ten tefachim off the surface above the surface of uh, the surrounding water. So this, this boat, the interior has 10 tefachim, height. However, the water, say, is right here. The ship is weighing down, is embedded in the water somewhat. And the distance between the water, the surface of the water, to the top of the ship is less than 10 tefachim. If so, one can transfer from inside this boat over to the yam. I will me I'm a yam but not in the reverse. He cannot transfer from the yam into the ship. Says the Gemara, let's analyze this. What is the difference between transferring out to the yam or into the ship? Why can he not transfer from the yam into the ship? To come a because he's transferring from the yam, which is a karmus, into the sfina, which is a shisayachet. If so, when he transferred from the ship out to the Yam, there as well, He's transferring from the Yam to the Yam. What is the difference between one and the other? Apparently, Rebidah is allowing him to spill water on the Chuda. Chuda means the top of the wall of the boat and allowing the water to trickle out on its own into the Karmelis. We hear from here, Apparently, we hear from this halacha that the Chacham did allow Transfer merely through using koyach, his force, which is an indirect transfer, and indeed this supports our assertion mentioned there on the Kuf that transferring in this manner is mutter. Now, why did the to speak specifically about a sfina which is ten deep and not lifted ten off the surface? Let's see Rashi inside. Rashi oh, on, on top of the Ahmed, beginning with the word amuka has sfina, so the boat is deep ten asor lasoicha. The interior, and therefore it's Rishasayachet. So the, the uh, Safa, the, the rim of the boat is not lifted. Tent Fachim off the surface. Kigoyin, for instance, is somewhat embedded in the water as a result of its weight. So he can transfer from the ship out to the Yam. By way of its walls, for instance, wastewater, as the Gemara explains, that transferring merely indirectly through force is mutter. But not from the yam into the boat. That wouldn't be practical. 
He's not going to spill onto the dofen of the of the ship shem yemale. If he goes and draws water from the sea below and spills it on the on the wall of the thing, it's going to trickle down to the floor. So it doesn't seem to be practical. So that's not in the in the equation here, and therefore to carry directly from the sfina from the yam into the sfina it would be also. So only one way is mutter. For instance, the shayfchan does wastewater when he spills it onto the doifen of the sfina and allows it to trickle out. But to directly, explicitly carry from the from the sea into the sfina would be also. So that explains, as Rashi will, will continue explaining, well, that explains why the ship needs to be ten tefachim deep. That's why he mentioned a sfina which is ten tefachim deep. The ena mukayud because if the interior does not have a depth of ten tefachim. He could be caramelous. Then the ship in, its, in itself is a caramelous because it doesn't have the height required to versus Sayyachat. Um, in that case, he can directly transfer even from the Yam into the ship because the ship is a caramelous and the Yam is a caramelous. So that explains why the ship needed to have an interior height of Tent to make it Rosh Sayyachat. Continues Rashi. And Rabbi specifically presented the case here as being Eina Gevoya Yud. It is not lifted ten tfachim above the surface of the water. So the top of the ship is within ten tfachim of the surface of the sea be, be surrounding it. Why? The Gevoya Yud, because otherwise, if, suppose the ship would be lifted ten tfachim above the surface of the Yam, in that case, it would be muta to carry directly from the yam into the ship. Why? Why is that? Because if you transfer something from the surface of the sea above the walls of this ship into the ship itself, what's happening? He is actually arriving at airspace which is not a Carmelis any longer, because it's beyond ten Tfachim of the Carmelis. If he needs to go over this wall, which is, extends ten Tfachim above the surface, then inevitably he has to carry this bucket of water above the ten Tfach mark, which is a Rishasayat, which is a Makam Ptur, and that would be allowed. Because he needs to lift his hand above ten Tfachim. So that would be that would be allowed. That wouldn't pose a problem. Therefore, Buda specifically tells us that the ship is embedded in the sea, and the top of the the wall is not ten tefachim above the surface of the water, which, in case he needs to transfer through a carmelis into shesayach, and therefore it's us. Concludes Rashi. Even though when it comes to a rishus which is minatoyra, for instance, a rishus arabim. And you want to transfer from Shisram to a Carmelis, then even in such a case, you'd be high, be liable, even if he goes through a Makam Tur. However, Carmelis Mio, Durabonani, this was just Carmelis, it's just Durabonani, like Gazra Chamim, did not prohibit in this case, where he's going to transfer through a Makam Tur. In this case, it would be Mut. Now, as Isis points out, this concept of carrying through a Makam Tur, which is Mutter, is specifically Rabbi Yehuda's opinion. Chacham disagree with that. And this is the Machlekes, which is presented by this Bryson, specifically regarding this case of transferring through a Makam Ptur. However, says Taisus, the general concept that transferring, Koychoy Big Karmelis Loy Gozru, transferring merely by using Koyach, there's no Issa there, that is accepted upon all. That is not a point of contention between Rabbi Yehuda and the Chacham. Thereby, there is a solid support so this concept from the Spreisa, which is, this concept is supported and held by all Shittas. That Koyche Bekarmelis Legozru, for instance, transferring the wastewater by way of pouring it on top of the Daifen of the Sfina, allowing it to trickle into the Yam, that would be Mutter, according to all Shittas. Continues the Gemara, Omar Rav Hunu, Hani Bits Asa Di Meishan, these small boats from the place called Meishan, a Metatun Behen El one cannot carry within these boats. They are regarded as a carmelis. So you can only carry within for Amis. Why is that? Aren't they surrounded with Mechitzes? Explains Rashi. 
So Rashi here is 19 lines from the top, beginning with the word Bitsasa. Says Rashi, Sfinas Ktanas Uktsores, small boats, Uktsores Milamata, Ad Kechude Shosaken. They narrow on bottom like the tip of a knife. Shekar and Kvaiti, like these canoes. So it's a sort of a V shaped boat, where on top it is wide for Tfachem, say, but on bottom it narrows to the point that there's no Fort Fachem surface on the bottom. A metalton besoychan to lav mishseyachet nino. They are not treated as a mishseyachet. Why? Shei beruch v'na bom lemata. Because at the bottom point they are not Fort Fachem wide. Lefichach ein mechitzes ein mechitzes. Their mechitzes are not regarded as mechitzes because they're not enclosing a surface of Fort Fachem. So once again, although on top they have a width of Fort Fachem since they narrow to the point that on bottom they don't have a width of Fort Fachem. These mechitzas are not functional. And therefore, it, is, it has the din of a caramelist. It's like a place without mechitzas. Let's see the Gemara inside. continues the Gemara. This is only a concern. This is only said, Elo. That the ship does not widen to a width of four tfachim within three tfachim of the bottom. Because if that would happen, then we know three tfachim is loved, it is disregarded, and we can view as though the surface, the bottom of the ship, begins at that point. So in that case, there wouldn't be a concern. That within three tfachim, to the ground, there is no four width. It's still narrow, even at the point of three tfachim from the surface, from the bottom. But if within three tfachim to the bottom, the mechit is widen enough, to give you a dimension, a surface, an area of what Tfachim, in that case, less than but there's no concern because we regard this point as though it's the bottom of the boat, as though it's the uh, very bottom surface, and we consider the Mechitzas to be proper Mechitzas because they are encasing an area of what Tfachim. So once again, if the Mechitzas widen to what Tfachim within three Tfachim of the bottom, then we can consider that as being the flow of the boat, provided that there is an additional ten tefachim above that point to the uh, top of the boat. Continues the Gemara, another, cho- another option, if he should fill up the bottom of the boat, the narrow point with kani reeds, urbani, these willow branches, less than here as well, there's no concern because we can ignore that narrow point. He filled it up with something uh, and he lifted the bottom of the boat, the surface of the boat, to the point where we have the width, the proper width of Fort Fachim, and we view that as the bottom most point of the boat, and the Mechitzes are certainly enclosing a surface of Fort Fachim. Once again, we need that the Mechitzes should extend an extra 10 Fachim beyond that point, beyond that floor, to create a Rosh But otherwise, one cannot carry in this boat. Mask of Lord of Nachman. I'm not going to challenge this. Why don't you apply the halacha, halacha l'moishu misinai, of good achas mechitzasa. Good means pull. Good achas, extend downward the mechitzis. So although, although uh, at the bottom point they are too narrow, but since at, at the top they are just fine and perfect, they are enclosing an area of Fort Fahim, let's drag them down, let's visualize as if the mechitzis is extending downward in a, in a straight line from both sides of the boat. And indeed, we have mechitzes on bottom as well, which are proper mechitzes, which are enclosing an Erev Fotvachim. Milo Tanya, haven't we learned that we apply this concept in a similar case? Rabbi Yosef Rudaimah, Nods Kana B'Shisarab, if one plants a pole, a narrow pole in B'Shisarab, Uberoishu Traskel, and on top of this pole is situated, is positioned a Traskel, a basket. So he has this narrow pole, which does not have a... Uh, Dimension of Rosh Hashayachet, it's not four by four tfachim. On top of this pole is situated a basket, which has the proper dimension, the proper surface area of four tfachim by four tfachim. However, the mechitzas of this basket are short, they're not ten tfachim in height. Says Rav Yehis or Yehuda, Vizorak v'nochal gabav chayv. If he's standing in Shisram and he throws a chayfetz on top of this basket, he's chayv. Now, although the basket doesn't really have the proper mechitzas, it doesn't have mechitzas which are gavoya yud. So why is the basket or shasayachet? Alma amrin. Apparently, we say good achas mechitzasa. 
that we pull down, we pull those mechitzes of the, of the Yitraskel downward. The mechitzes are visualized as if they're extending downward, and they create mechitzes of Yutfachim, which results in the top of the basket being Rishos HaYachid. Hachinami, here as well, by this narrow boat, name of good Achas Mechitzos. Let's say that we should extend the mechitzes downward and create wide mechitzes, even on bottom, thereby validating those mechitzes and enabling this boat to be considered Rishos HaYachid. Says the Gemara, Mask of Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef challenged this. V'loi Shmielu, have they not heard Lahad Amarvid Amarav? Some say that it was Rabchia, Mishra Rabchia, in the name of Rabchia. V'tani Allah, there's actually an amendment on that, Brysa, of Rav Yosef Yudah's basket case. V'chacham Paitim. The Chacham disagree, they hold that if one throws an object onto his basket, he's Potter. Because they don't apply the concept of Gurach Hashem Ketzasa. So, yes, granted, Rav Yosef Yudah maintains good aches in such a case. But Rav Chacham disagree. So, according to the Chacham, this ship, this little boat, is a Carmelis. Normally, a bias, a valid challenge of Yosef. We can differentiate between the narrow pole which contains this basket, where according to the Chacham, we don't apply the concept of good aches, in contrast to this ship, to this boat, where even the Rabban would agree that you can extend those mechitas downward. Why? Do you not agree that we can extend those mechitas downward? It's a post. It's not a narrow pole, it's a relatively wide post. It is 10 tfachim high and it has a surface on top of 4 tfachim by 4 tfachim. However, the problem is maybe on the bottom there is no um, width of four tfachim. So it's a bit narrow on bottom. Let's say it's three tfachim wide on bottom. And then it widens till it gets to four tfachim. Now this narrow part on bottom is actually three tfachim off the ground. Meaning if it would, if it would widen immediately off the ground, say it's only, the, the narrow part is only two tfachim, and then it immediately widens, then we would ignore the narrow part, we say love it, it's as though it's, uh, it, it, um, it's negligent, we, 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 just dis- we just disregard that. But the fact that the narrow part contains a height of three tfachim, we have to reckon with it. Nevertheless, the Brisa says, V'zorak v'nachal gavav chayev. If he was to throw an object from Shisram up onto that post, he's chayev. The question is, where, where is Shisayachet? Shisayachet needs to have a height of ten and a width of four tfachim. The bottom of this post is not four tfachim. Alma, apparently I'm reading good aches mechitzas. Apparently we apply the concept of good aches extend downward those mechitzas. So we take the mechitzas from the top of the of the post. Right? So the top of the post looks like this. It's narrow on bottom and it widens on top. And we pull down the mechitzas which is present on top of the post. We pull it downward. And we visualize as if the entire bottom is surrounded with mechitzes, which are enclosing an area of four tvachim by four tvachim. Here as well, says Abai, Hachanami, when it comes to the narrow boat, good achas mechitzasa. We can pull down those mechitzes. Now, what about the fact that the Chachamim held that in the case where we had the basket on the pole, we don't apply this concept. Says Abai, there's a big difference. Me the area? Can you bring a proof from that case? Hossam, in that case, since it's a narrow pole, which is supporting this white basket, so the public traverses, probably goes through under the basket, because it's a narrow pole, and there's an area the under the basket which is traveled. So they disrupt this visual mechitza. You can't pull down mechitzas when it's a middle of a thoroughfare. Hossam, havila mechitza, shagdoyim boikimba. It's a mechitza with the gdoyim, the goats, penetrate. So you can't visualize the mechitza being there because it's, it's being penetrated, traveled by the, by the animals. Hocha, in our case. Havi la mechitza, she'ein hagdoyim boikava. In the case of the, of the boat, there's no public, there's no, no goats traveling through these mechitzas. So why can't you pull the mechitza down, visualize as if it's extending straight downward, and creating an enclosure of four tvachim? It's likewise in the case of the of the pole of the almud of this 
post. Here as well, there is no G'dayim Baikimba. And therefore, we can pull down those Mechitzas. Explains Rashi. Rashi here is eight lines from the bottom. Beginning with the words, Mishum Dahavi Mechitza, Shag Doyim Baikimba. This explains why when it comes to the rod, the pole, with the basket on top of it, of course, the Chachamim, we cannot apply the concept of Gurach. We can't visualize the Mechitzas of the basket as though they're extending downward. Because it's a mechitza that the gdoyim abaykim ba mulamata ba oritz tachas mechitza atraskel. The gdoyim, the goats, are penetrating underneath, under the mechitzas of this basket. Shem pshuto is lahal min akonel cholzat, which are extending, which are the 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 traskel are pshuto is lahal min akonel cholzat, meaning they are um, they are extending. Past the, uh, the, the, the pole, the rod. So we have a narrow pole and the basket is on top. So the mechitzas are at a distance, are coming down at a distance from the pole, which allows the gedoyim to penetrate that area and disrupt the mechitzas. Or bakiyas gedoyim ma'keves, melameim ma'gud aches, shari even tachtel, because the goats are traveling underneath these imaginary mechitzas. There's a large space there, so you can't apply good aches here. Avil besfina. However, when it comes to the ship, like a bgias bgias gadaim, there are no goats penetrating. Shein lechol every time there's nobody who is traversing underneath these imaginary mechitzes. V'chein ba'avod and likewise by this post, ein derech lechakech boy. It is not uh, the manner of people. It's not customary to go and and rub themselves in this uh, in this amud. To go underneath this angle. Shein elam at, only a small space, meaning this beam, this amud, so it's a bit narrow and bottom and it extends, it widens towards the top. So it looks something like this. It's, uh, it starts like this and it angles a bit towards the top. This area underneath, this angle, is a very small area. It's not the depth of people to squeeze in there and to get underneath there, so it's not being penetrated. Therefore, there's nothing to hold us back from bringing down the mechitza of the top of the post downward to visualize as if it's going in a straight down, line downward and creating an enclosure of Fort Fahim or Fort Fahim. Sabai disagrees with Rabbi Yisrael. He says we can draw a distinction, a chilik, a simple chilik between the case of the pole with the gdoyim abaykim. They are penetrating beneath this basket which is extending at a distance from this uh, sideways at a distance of this, of this rod. So certainly over there, the traffic disrupts those imaginary mechitzas as opposed to the post and as opposed to the ship where there are no, there's no traffic underneath there. Therefore, there's nothing to preclude the aloha of good aches from taking hold and creating those proper mechitzas. Continues the Gemara. We nami by a boat as well. What about the fish that are penetrating? And they, they should disrupt those mechitzas. So you cannot visualize the mechitzas going down into the water. The, the fish are penetrating and disrupting, nullifying the mechitzas. Amr later, Rashi says, no concern. Bekiyas dogim lo bekiya. Fish penetrating are not reckoned with. Says Rashi, this is three lines from the bottom. Bekiyas dogim lo bekiya. The fish ain't near and they're not visible to us. Therefore, they don't nullify the mechitzas. Umunatemra. How do we know? How do you know to say such a concept that dogim don't disrupt mechitzes? The boy mine Reb Tavla Mirav. Reb Tavla asked the following question of Rav. Mechitza tzluy. What about a suspended mechitza? Mao shetate bechover. We have a ruins, a home which is um, which collapsed, and there are some. There's a mechitza which is suspended midair. So you have a mechitza on top, which is not reaching the floor below. Can that serve as a mechitza? We know generally speaking, a mechitza is meant to enclose an area on a surface, meant to be connected down to the um, surface below. So a mechitza which is suspended in air, does that work? But Amalei he told him, no, ain mechitza tzluyum a A suspended mechitza cannot affect heter, cannot work, cannot be effective. El b'mayim, only when it comes to a partition which is made above water. Kalu sheikilu hacham b'mayim. This is a leniency, a kula which the hacham applied to water. So, for instance, we had in Afkuf a case where he would like to draw water from the uh, lake below into the ship. 
So according to one sheet, he needs to create those uh, that enclosed area, those mechitzes. Now those mechitzes are suspended in midair. They're not going down and partitioning the actual water itself. That is sufficient. When it comes to the water, the Chacham did not obligate the uh, water as a caramelous, the Rabbanon. Chacham did not obligate, would not mechaiv him to go ahead and create partitions in the water itself. It's sufficient that he creates mechitzes suspended above the water that already affects a separation that that indicates that the water below is, is separate, is separated by virtue of these mechitzes above them. It's separated from the area be, be, uh, surrounding it. And thereby, we view that uh, section of water below the mechitzes as they are Rishas HaYachid, and one can draw from there. So this is a leniency applied to water. But when it comes to a churva, which is on uh, solid ground, the ruins here, the churva, which has a suspended mechitza, mechitza, which is not reach down to the bottom is ineffective. Okay, but uh, nevertheless, when it comes to water, it does work. Even a suspended mechitza, even mechitza tlia works. Famai, how come? Ha'ikim kiyas dagim. What about the fish that are penetrating this mechitza? So we visualize this mechitza is extending downward and separating the water from the surrounding water. What about the fish that are penetrating, that are going through this imaginary mechitza? Ella shma you know, apparently we hear from here. Bekiyas the dogim loy shma bekiya. Fish, the penetration of fish does not nullify the mechitza and are not reckoned with. So therefore, once again, when it comes to our narrow ship, we can certainly apply the concept of good achats, extend those mechitzas downward, create straight mechitzas, which are enclosing an area, a dimension of four by four tfachim, and therefore are constituted as mechitzas, and allow carrying in this ship as an ordinary shasayachit. So in summary, what about these small ships, b'tziyasa demeshan? The Gemara told us that if the walls widen to the point of four tfachim, within the three tfachim of the, uh, of the bottom of the ship, in this case, one can be metaltal in this boat because that point is viewed as the bottom of the ship because it's within tfachim to the ground, to the bottom of the ship. Alternatively, if he fills up the bottom of the ship with Kanevo Irvini and creates this artificial floor space, which is four tfachim wide, in that case as well, he can be metaltal in the boat. What about if, he, if none of these are, are applicable? And the top of the, um, of the boat indeed has a certain area for Tfachim, but the bottom doesn't. Now we have a machlekes. Rav Huna maintains one cannot carry this boat. We cannot apply good achas here because the fish are penetrating. According to Abayi, one can be metaltal on the ship because we view those mechites as though they extend straight downward. Good achas mechitzasa. What about the fish? We don't reckon with the fish. They're not visible. Bekiyas dogim. Lo ishmei bekiyas. Now, we had a discussion regarding when to apply good achas, when not to apply good achas. Let's just round up different cases. So we had a case of a kana b'shesurabim, a pole, with a traskal, a basket, positioned on top of it. In this case, we have machlekes. Rabbi Yisrael says, we can view those mechitzas of the basket, though they're extending straight downward. And the top of the traskal contains a proper dimension of a shesayachid. It is four, four by four tfachim, and it has those mechitzes, those proper mechitzes, because of good achas. They have mechitzes which are gavayot. Quinter rabbanon, we don't apply good achas here. The Gemara explained, by explained, because the bekias rabbim, the public, specifically those goats, which are traversing beneath this basket, they disrupt those imaginary mechitzes. And therefore, we cannot have mechitzes extending down to the floor. And the basket, therefore, is not regarded as shayachet because it doesn't have mechitzes which are ten tfachim high. What about in the case of an almad which is a post, which is now on bottom and widens towards the top? All agree that gerachas will apply and the top of the post is considered to be a shayachet. What about those small boats that it's the meisham? Do we apply gerachas? As we just said, we have a machlaikas. Whether we apply good achas, thereby creating mechites, which are four tfachim by four tfachim, or, according to the other sheet, we can't apply good achas here because the dogim are disrupting. They're disrupting the imaginary mechites, so we're left with very narrow mechites on bottom, and therefore the boat is a karmless and not a shaseyach. Continues the Gemara. 
the Mishnah said, Sfina is Kshroyz. Zubazu, we have the boats which are tied to each other. The Mishnah told us, Metalton as a result of the fact that they're tied together, one can carry from one to the other. Now, this seems to be a very simple halacha. Pshita. Obviously, why not? Why can't you carry from one to the other? They're both Rosh Sayachid, Amar Rabbi Nitzracha. The Chiddush of the Mishnah is, is to teach us the following case. El Alahatir Beitzis Shebenei. We're speaking about that in between these ships that are tied to each other, there's a small ship. It Beitzis. Rashi says it's it's like uh, similar to the Betzias of the Mishan, this mini boat that we discussed earlier. And this little boat is not actually tied; it's wedged between these two large ships. The Mishnah will teach us that one can carry from the um, from the large ships in through the um, through the small ship, even though it's not really tied. We're not concerned that it's going to float away and he's going to end up carrying through the airspace, which is uh, created by the little ship floating away. There's no concern. We are we are uh, we are sure that the ship will stay there stay in place, and therefore the mission tells us one can carry from the two large ships with this basis, which is wedged between them, even though it's not tied to the ships. Amalei, Rav Safra. So Rav Safra responded to Rav, Moshe? So Rashi says, Moshe means Kalema, Rabbeinu Bedur ki Moshe Bedur. It's a term, it's an endearing term. You're like Moshe Rabbeinu in his generation, you're a great Talmud Chacham. Shabbat are you, are you Are you saying, well, is this true? Can that be that this is the proper interpretation of the Mishnah? To allow carrying through this small boat? The Mishnah says we can carry from one large boat to the other. There's no discussion of a mini boat wedged between them. El Amar of Safra. This is the Pshan of the Mishnah. The halacha of the Mishnah is coming to teach us a halacha is only needed for the following case. The Mishnah tells us that even if the two ships belong to two owners. Although they're two, both, both Rosh Hashayachet. But with Rabban, one cannot transfer a chayfetz from a Rosh Hashayachet owned by Ruvay to a Rosh Hashayachet owned by Shimon. He needs to make an Erev Chatzeris to combine the ownership, so to speak. That's it. It's the Rabban. The Mishnah tells us when these ships are tied together, that enables them to make that Erev Chatzeris to combine ownership, so to speak, to allow transfer from one Rosh Hashayachet to the other. Boats which are tied to each other. One can make an Erev and as a result of the Erev transfer a Chayfetz from one Sfina to the other. What about Nifsiku? If they got detached, Nasr. Then they become Asr. One can no longer carry from one to the other. So even though they're perhaps very close to each other, Rashi says, the error becomes nullified temporarily because they're about to be separated from each other. The, error, the point of the error is that the ownerships are combined, regarded as one Rosh Hashayachet, but if they're about to separate because they're not tied to each other, they're about to float away. The error at this point is nullified. Says the Brayse, Chazor of Anikshu, what if even on Shabbos itself, they became retied and attached to each other? Regardless of the circumstance, Bein Shoigigin, whether it was done inadvertently, they did it Bein Shoigig, Bein Mizid, they did it, they did it intentionally, even though it's an Isra, one may not tie on Shabbos. Bein Anusin, they did it Bein Anus, unwillingly. Bein Mutin, they did it mistakenly, accidentally, Rashi says they were busy tying something else, and somehow these both got tied to each other. In any of these cases, Chazrul Atenarishin, the boats revert to their original heter, the original permission, the Erev uh, reactivates itself since they're tied to each other and they can transfer from one to the other. The um, mats which are, which are um, set up, which are spread out in the Rishos And in these mats, some people are residing within cubicles, separated by cubicles. Since right now they're inside this enclosure, these mats, so it is considered to be a shayachet. And indeed, they can, these various individuals residing within these separate cubicles, they can make an Erev with each other, which will allow them to transfer from each other. But Nigalu, what about these machzolis, these mats, 
which are creating the mechitza, the enclosure around these individuals, separating them from the shusrab, these mats are actually making their shusayachat. What if they got rolled up, meaning they got removed? Nasrul. Then they, the people inside can no longer transfer from one cubicle to the other because they're sitting in their shusrab. One cannot make air of chatzet, their shusrab. What about chazur v'nifrasu? What about these mats surrounding them were laid out again, were spread out again, which is asr. So in Atoira, one cannot make a mechitza, which is a mechitza kavu, an established mechitza. Mid Rabban, even a mechitza right, temporary mechitza is asr. If it is going to make a heter, if it's trying to, uh, you're trying to effect a, a, a heter, for instance, in this case, where you're trying to uh, fashion a heter tiltal and allow us to carry, you're making a shisayach through this uh, mechitza, it doesn't affect the halacha. Chazur and Ifrasu, even if on Shabbos itself, these mats were spread out again, thus creating an enclosure, or Shisayachad, Ben Shoygigid, Ben Mezidin, whether they did it inadvertently or intentionally, Ben Anusin, it was done Ba'inas, against their will, or Ben Mutan, they did it accidentally, Chazur at Tenerishan. So the individuals inside these uh, mats revert back to their original permission, and even though it happened on Shabbos, they can still carry within this enclosure. And the Bryce concludes, Shukal Mechitza Shanasa B'Shabbos, any Mechitza, which was formed on Shabbos, Ben B'Shoigig, Ben B'Mezid, Shema Mechitza. It's regarded as Mechitza. So, in our case of these ships as well, even though they were tied on Shabbos, through an Isser, one can carry from one to the other, because the Erev was reactivated, and they can carry from one to the other. So that's the discussion of our Mishnah. We have two boats which are tied to each other and are combined through an Erev Chatseris. The two owners of the two ships have created that Erev Chatseris to combine their ownership, so to speak. And therefore, they are allowed to carry from one to the other. Continues the Gemara. Amy, is that the case? That a Mechitza which was erected on Shabbos is considered to be a full-fledged Mechitza? The Amr of Nachman. Did Rav Nachman say, Lo Yishonu El Elizrik? Loishana, we only learned this concept that erecting Mechitza Shabbat is considered to be a proper Mechitza El Elizraik, only when it pertains to throwing within it. So if one is standing outside this Mechitza in the Shisarab and throws the Chayfetz within the, inside this enclosure, he has done a Malacha. Because Minat Torah, this Mechitza, which was erected on Shabbat, has a full-fledged Din Mechitza. Avel Etatel Aser, but to carry within this enclosure, it's Aser. The Rabbanah, they apply the Knasik penalty to prohibit carrying within this enclosure which was erected on Shabbos. So how could the Brises say that a mechitza, these mats which were spread out on Shabbos, allow carrying within them? Says the Ki Itma de Rav Nachman. This halacha of Rav Nachman was only said, Amazed Itma. We only learned it regarding mezid. Meaning, if one intentionally builds this mechitza on Shabbos, in that case, a chacham applied an iser, and this allowed carrying within this enclosure. And indeed, the Bryce is not disagreeing with that. When the Bryce that tells us that one can carry within this enclosure, it is specifically speaking about shoigeg or mut accidentally done, or anus was done unwillingly. When the Bryce mentions mezid, that is not pertaining to the het of vimatato within this mechitza. It is only pertaining to the uh, conclusion of the Brayza, which says that a mechitza, rectal on Shabbos, has the mechitza. So, in that regard, even a mezid is a mechitza minat Torah, pertaining to throwing within it. But when it comes to carrying within the mechitza, it will only apply to the other cases in exclusion of mezid. Now, as Tzitzis points out, when it comes to the case of the Sfinois, those ships mentioned now Mishnah, which are tied to each other, in that case, even if they become retied on Shabbos itself, one may still carry from one to the other. Even when it was done b'mezid. Why is that, says Tosis? Because in contrast to the case of the uh, mats, which were spread on Shabbos and created an enclosure of Shisayachat, you took a Shisarabim and you turned it into Shisayachat on Shabbos. In that case, there's a knas Medrabana not to carry within that. However, those boats, those ships, are considered to be Shisayachat even prior to being tied together. So he didn't actually create a Rishisayachat. He merely tied two separate Rishisayachats to each other to allow making an Erev to carry from one to the other. In this case, since he didn't actually create a Rishisayachat, even if it was done by Mezid, the Chachamim did not apply a Knas and he can carry from one to the other. 
continues the Gemara Amar Shmuel, Ba'afilu Kshurois Bechutas Sarbal. Even if these ships are tied together with a flimsy lace, a Chutas Sarbal, this lace is meant to uh, tie the cloak together, that's sufficient. And these boats are considered to be one and connected, and an Erev can be done to allow carrying from one to the other. What's the situation here? If this uh, lace has the ability to keep them, keep them in place, keep the ships in place, pshita, then self-evident, why not? If it doesn't have the ability to keep them in place, amai, then why? Why do we reckon with it? If it's uh, something which doesn't have the ability to keep the uh, boats tied together, then it's, it's ineffective. You can't even make an error because they're about to separate from each other. Apparently we're speaking about, of course, it has the ability to keep them together. Ushmuel, this statement of Shmuel is la fuki with enough shekos. He's coming to exclude from uh, something, a requirement that he himself has stated elsewhere. What does the word mean? It's not as willing to the Mishnah Masech, it's always regarding a sfina a ship. Kasha bedavah ha if one ties down the boat, with something which has the ability to keep it in place, maybe Latuma, then it will bring this uh, object that's tying down the boat, will affect Tuma, will bring Tuma, will import Tuma, a very high degree, high level of Tuma into the ship, will make the ship Tuma and its content as well. But if he uses something which doesn't have the ability to tie down the boat, he's tying it down with something that doesn't really have the ability to tie it down properly, a maybe Latuma. It will not import tuma a high degree of tuma to this boat. We'll explain what this means soon. Vama Shmuel, vuhu shekasha b'shal shal shal barzel. The mission which tells us that if he ties down the ship, that item used to tie down the ship will bring into will import tuma to the ship. You know what we're speaking about? Shal 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 barzel. He used a an iron chain to keep down to tie down the ship. Why? Why specifically an iron chain? Explains Rashi because this chain which is tying down the ship, the other side of the chain is actually inserted in an oil hames. It's under the same roof as a mace, in which the shalshal uh, shal barzel acquires a very high level of tumma, the highest form of tumma. It becomes tumma just as the mace. The mace is an avia vaisa tumma, a grandfather of tumma. This metal item, metal utensil, will receive that high level of tumma. We know that a, a kli, which is metal, comes into contact with a mace, or in the same oil as a mace. It has the same tumma as the mace, it becomes an via voice tumma, and in turn, it can transfer a very high level of tumma to the sphina which it's touching. The sphina will actually drop down a level and become an ava tumma, and in turn, the sphina will be a tummy, its contents, and make them a rishna tumma. So Shmuel comes and tells us, that when the mission tells us, that if he tied the ship down with a dover hama amida, we're speaking about something which is customarily used to tie down a ship, which is a shal 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 barzel. Says the Gemara, that's specific to the concept of tuma. When you tuma, when it comes to tuma, the pasuk says about chalal cherev. If one comes into contact with a chalal, a body killed through a cherev, through a sword, we we'll make a drasha. Cherev or kachalal, the metal sword has the same thing as the body and becomes an aviyah vayisat tuma. So over there, in yes, a metal chain is required to transfer this high level of tumma, because only a metal chain will indeed receive, contract this high tumma of the mace, because it's unique to metal. So that's specific in that context. So Shmuel tells us that the, the Dover Hamamida, the thing that's tying down the boat in that context of that mission of tumma needs to be metal. But that has no relevance to Shabbos. Avalin in Shabbos, Shmuel comes and tells us that you meant to know that when it comes to Shabbos, it's unrelated. Kibbutz Yochel Hamida, since this thing has the ability to keep these ships in place, keep them together, I feel the Sarbal, even using a flimsy uh, lace, like this Chuta Sarbal, this lace meant to tie down, hold down the, uh, the, tie down the cloak, that's sufficient because all we need is that these ships should stay together. That's sufficient to keep them tied together and uh, to enable the Arab to be made from one to the other and enable transferring from one to the other. So in summer we learned that Sfina is that Akshura is ships that are tied to each other, even using a chutasarol that connects the two ships together and enables an Arab to be made. Ma'arvin or Matatlam Zulazu. Now, if they become separated on Shabbos, then the Arab for the time being is invalidated. If they are retied even on Shabbos, in this case, one can 
go ahead and resume the carrying from one to the other, the air becomes reactivated. Okay, time for a brief review of today's daf. We began with the concept of koychay bekarmus, transferring something merely using koyach, indirectly, through force, that is mutter, because the karmus is only just a so For instance, one may spill water on the top of the um, wall of the sfina and allow it to trickle down into the yam, koychay bekarmus legozri. The more continued, describing for us this small bitsyasa de mesha, this small boat, which is all the wide on top but very narrow on bottom. The more told us that if within three tfachim to the surface, to the bottom of the, of the boat, the uh, walls had already widened and have reached a dimension of four tfachim by four tfachim, in this case, one can be metaltal in this little boat. Alternatively, if he fills up the bottom with uh, branches, and creates a surface of 4 by 4 tfachim, then it's okay. What if he didn't do any of these things? And we have a wide boat on top, but very narrow on bottom. According to Rav Huna, one cannot be metallic on this boat, because the bottom portion of the boat does not have 4 by 4 tfachim. And therefore the mechitzas at that point are not generating a proper enclosure. They need to enclose a surface of Fort Fachim. Therefore, as a dinner of a karmas, according to Abai, one can be metal on the ship as well. Why? Because although on bottom they are narrow, but the mechitzas, which are wide on top, which have Fort Fachim, are regarded as they are extending straight, a, a, a straight line downward. Good achas So we drag down those mechitzas, thereby creating an enclosure even on bottom of Fort by Fort Fachim. Now, the fact that there are fish that are penetrating uh, through these imaginary mechitzas is no concern. Bekiyah's dogim, loishma bekiyah, they're not visible to us. Therefore, they don't disrupt the mechitzas. The more concluded with these ships that are tied to each other. So they belong to two people and they're tied to each other. And the air was activated. That allows carrying from one to the other. And the Gemara told us that if they become detached, one cannot carry no longer because the air of has become deactivated, if they become reattached on Shabbos, retied, then one may resume his carrying from one to the other. The Gemara told us that mechitzas, which were erected on Shabbos, are considered to be proper mechitzas in our Now, if it was done b'mezid, then the Rabban one cannot carry within the enclosure of the mechitza that was erected on Shabbos. Now, just getting back at one point regarding the b'tziyasa uh, de mishan, these uh, small narrow uh, boats, which Rashi explains to us, the mechitzas are non-existent because at the bottom point, they narrow, there's no fort tfachim, of enclosure there, says Taisvis. So why are they considered to be a karmelis? A karmelis also requires a, an area of fort tfachim. If the bottom of the boat is not, doesn't have a surface of fort tfachim, then it's a makam tur, it's not a karmelis. And one should be allowed to carry within this boat. Says Rav Chaim Halevi, Rav Chaim Salavet, Rav Chaim Briska, explains Rashi as follows. He says that there are two separate aspects to the din of four tfachim by four tfachim. Number one, is the din that the mokim, the rishus, needs to have that dimension. So in order for it to be considered a karmel, it needs to have an area of four tfachim by four tfachim. Says Reb Chaim Soloveitchik, this boat has a mokim of four tfachim. The top of the boat has an area of four tfachim. So that already generates a din mokim. The problem here is that the mechitzas are not valid. Why? Because although the makam is fort fachim, but when it comes to mechitzas, we focus on the bottom of the mechitzas, where they, where they enclose. For instance, mechitzas that are attached to the ground, we focus on the bottom. That's where they're enclosing. That's where they're partitioning. So at the bottom point, they need to, they need to constitute mechitzas. They need to enclose an area for tfachim by for tfachim. In this case of the ship, the bottom point is too narrow. So although the mokim is for tfachim, but the mechitzas are not valid because at their bottom point, they are too narrow to be considered proper mechitzas. So certainly, this place has dalat tfachim, but since it is a mokim dalat tfachim without mechitzas, so it's a karmelis. It has for tfachim, so it's a karmelis. But it's a place without mechitzes. So what is the din of a place without mechitzes? A mokam marba that doesn't have mechitzes. That's a karmelis. So that explains why it can't carry within this area. It says Reb Chaim as well. Good aches would help us. By dragging down those mechitzes, you would create wide mechitzes on bottom. 
thereby giving those mechitzes a din, a legal din of mechitzes, and therefore the enclosed, the boat which is enclosed by those mechitzes, is regarded as Rishas HaYachet. Now Tosis asked, how can we say good achas? How can you dread on those mechitzes? What's good achas going to help us? If there's no makam of our boat, the place is too narrow. It's not Fort Fahim. Says Reb Chaim, the makam has Fort Fahim on top. That is sufficient to grant it a din of makam dalat Fahim. The problem was that the mechitzes are not valid because at their bottom point, they are not Fort Fahim wide. Good achas will address that by dragging down the mechitzes in a straight line. That's going to widen those mechitzes on bottom and generate valid and legal mechitzes, thereby creating a Rishasayachid in this boat.